Now let's look at the actual code of invest.c. So here's the top of the file. We start with program comments. And a comment is anything on the same line following a slash slash like you see here in the first line. So your compiler now is going to ignore everything on this line. When we get to a new line, it starts paying attention again. So in addition to slash slash, which is a convenient way to do one line comments, another thing you can do is you can make a slash star like you see right over here. And once it sees a slash star, it's going to ignore everything that comes after that until it sees a star slash, like it's seeing right here. OK, so here's where we use some stars just to maybe look pretty in our comments. But the truth is, anything after the slash star will be ignored until your compiler sees a, a star slash. So these are all comments. You say what the program does, and you might tell us the history, when it was created, and by whom. Going down. The next piece of the code is the preprocessor commands. So the preprocessor is a program that runs before your compiler actually runs. And it re replaces this pound include standard o.h with function prototypes for functions that allow you to print to the screen or read from the keyboard. That way, later in your program, when you use printf, it won't cause an error because it knows the definition of that function. So that's what standard io.h does. We're gonna, the preprocessor just replaces that with function prototypes. The other way we can use the preprocessor is to define a constant. So a constant is different than a variable. variable can be, a variable can be changed during the program. A constant cannot. So what we've done here is we said the maximum number of years we ever want to track an investment is 100. So we defined this constant max years 100. And now anywhere in the program we see max years, it's, the compiler or the preprocessor is going to replace that with 100. Okay? So we can't possibly change it anywhere else in the program because it's been replaced with a constant. So why do we want to use this? Well, instead of typing 100 everywhere we want to use it in the program, this gives us a way to just do it once and then to easily change it later. And instead of making max years a variable where we could accidentally change it by making it a constant, that can't happen. Okay? So these are two functions of the preprocessor. After that, we have data type definitions. As we said, we already have int, float, char, double available to us. But for this program, we might want a new data type. So we're going to define a data type called investment. And what investment is going to do, it's going to carry a few different variables with it so we can pass it around as a single packet. OK, so here's our type def means we're going to define a new type. And the type of new type we're going to define is a structure. OK, and the name of this new type is investment. And once we finish this, we now have a new data type, just like double is a data type. Now, what a structure is going to do that's special for us is carry a number of different variables inside of it. And in this case, it's going to carry a double called inv0, your initial investment. It's going to carry a double called growth, that number from one or higher if you're expecting positive growth. It's going to have an integer, which is the number of years that you want to track that investment. And it's also going to have an array here called invarray that has, in this case, 100 plus one elements. So we have 101 elements of the array, and this array is type double. And that will carry our, our uh, new investment value at each year. Okay. So now we've got a structure. We, if we pass that structure, we've got all the variables going along with it. We don't have to pass all the variables individually. And finally, global variables. So in this program, we don't have any global variables. But if you did have any, this is where you would put them. And it's a good thing to define global variables to look a little bit different than global or local variables. For instance, you might capitalize the first letter of a global variable. And that's your cue to know, hey, this is a global. Similarly, up here, when we define this constant max years, we made it all capitals. And that way, when we see it somewhere else in the program, we won't confuse it with a variable. We know that that's a constant. This isn't required, but it's, it's helpful for you to remember what kinds of constants or variables you're dealing with.